talk about the new instant replay where you're going to be able to go to the monitor last two minutes of the game to check possession is really the big change in that you had an interesting experience of that against Miami what do you think of this new wrinkle in the rules well I think it's great Andy I think uh, every official wants to get it right you know they do uh, and obviously at the end of the game in the last two minutes you're playing possession basketball time and score become really important and you know I think they got it right going to two minutes I know there was some thought about one minute uh, I think two minutes makes a lot more sense because that's going to determine number of possessions down the stretch that become so instrumental. I agree. I think anytime we can get it right late in the game, we need to do that. The only thing is giving a team an extra timeout. If there's not a timeout left because of them going to the monitor, now you can bring your team to the sideline. You can draw up a play. I don't know about that. Maybe if we can keep the teams on the floor, if they don't have a timeout left, that may be something I'd be in favor of. Well, I think the NBA model is very good. You know, you have an opportunity for the referees to review it. Uh, the game's still being played at the same pace, but I, I think it'll be better for college basketball. You know, they also were looking at uh, potentially changing the shot clock. Um, Florida Gulf Coast, when Andy Enfield was the head coach, certainly Dunk City mm -hmm. uh, was up and down. They decided against that. They're going to keep it at 35 seconds. Where did you guys stand on potentially changing the shot clock? I like where the shot clock is personally. I think it's good for college basketball. We played, when we played overseas with Kansas a year ago, we played with the 24 second shot clock. The pace of the game was so much quicker. Uh, I think it was a little bit more difficult for college kids to grasp. I like the same thing. Keep the shot clock where it's at. We're a little more methodical in how we play. We sometimes need to slow the game up with slow the game down, excuse me, with tempo. I like it where it's at. I think the biggest thing, the reason it came up is everyone's trying to increase scoring. And I, I think at the end of the day, the two things that are going to do that the most are one's how how the game's officiated and then two, the skill level of the players. You know, guys, uh, you look at shooting percentages. I, I saw a statistic of three-point shooting percentage and overall field goal percentage and how that's went down over the last several years. You know, a lot of that has to do with skill level of, of the players that, that play in college basketball. So I think, you know, the more skilled those guys are as we continue to develop our youngsters uh, with our youth programs and they continue to get to us and they're more skilled, there's a lot of talk about Europe you know, and how they develop their players. And then I also think how the game's officiated ultimately determines what type of scoring you're looking at if we want increased scoring. You're all at very different and unique institutions. And, Joe, I'll start with you. Obviously, um, you know, Florida Gulf Coast, no one knew of, for the most part, in the mainstream media a year ago. They get to the Sweet 16 in exciting fashion, knocking off Georgetown. What kind of expectations have you walked into with that head coaching job? Well, one of the good things is there are expectations. You know, here's a program that's only been eligible for two years to, to play in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you walk in with a, with a good nucleus of returning players, and I think now there's ex expectations, but they've also created some excitement. So the area's gotten fired up about it, and uh, it, it's better to be at a place where people care or want you to be successful, and there's apathy. And I, I think that's sort of what happened in our situation. And you return four or five starters, so a legitimate shot to you know, be back in the NCAA tournament. But it's not easy. You're going to still have to more than likely earn your way in. There's no doubt. And I think one of the things that's different is now we're playing with expectations. Last year, uh, Mercer was the head and shoulders favorite in the league. And they were able to come back and FGCU beat them in the championship game. But I think now there's a situation where they have to, we have to play with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder and play with expectations. If how hard it is? How hard is it? to build a program back up at Air Force. You guys lost Michael Lyons. Really an overhaul in a very tough conference in the Mountain West Conference. How hard is that to do at a place like Air Force? It's very challenging. You know, our cadet athletes, we can't take transfers, can't take foreign players. So we build it with seniors. We build it through our prep program. So every three or four years, we think we can make a rise in the conference. Last year, we won 18 games. That's the fourth best in the history of Air Force basketball in 57 years. We went 8-8 eight and eight in the very strong Mountain West Conference. That was the fourth best conference record at 8-8. Eight and eight. So you do it with some great young men, but it, it is challenging, but we love our guys. How would you compare the expectations you've had to deal with as an assistant? Let's go back to Ohio State, head coach at Ohio, and now as the head coach at Illinois. Well, expectations, and Joe said it, you'd, ra you'd rather than be in place. You know, I think apathy is a culture killer, and you certainly don't have to worry about that at Illinois. I mean, obviously the fans are, are fanatical about Illinois basketball. Uh, we're well-supported. People care about it at an extremely high level. I think there's a lot of excitement and buzz around the program right now, and it's something that we're trying to build on. The comparisons, obviously, from a Kansas to a Florida Gulf Coast. What's been the biggest difference that you've now had to deal with? 
Well, I, I think the, the culture of the Florida Gulf Coast, they haven't done this for that long. I mean, Kansas, everything's been in cruise control for X amount of years because they've done it so well. Uh, I think that's the good news for us. We can create a little bit of a culture and build on what the, the, the progress that Andy's made. And I think it's, uh, it's sort of neat. You can put your fingerprints on something. And Mountain West, uh, you know, adding Utah State and San Jose State, it makes it harder for teams that are trying to climb up. Sure. How much more difficult? It is. It, great program, Utah State. They win 20 every year. San Jose, State, San Jose State's going through a change, and coaches, they'll be up and coming. Great league. New Mexico will be strong. San Diego State, UNLV, Boise State. Watch for Boise State this year. And what are the chances the Big Ten can mimic what it did a year ago? Well, I think it's interesting. You know, I've been asked that question a lot. I think you look at the depth of the conference, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about, you know, certainly and, and deservedly so, Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, some of those teams early. But some of the teams at the bottom, you know, that were there last year are going to make a push. Um, you look at, you know, Penn State gets Frazier back. He was a first-team all-league guard two years ago. Uh, Northwestern gets Drew Crawford back. Um, I think those teams are going to be better. Tim did a great job at Nebraska. Uh, I thought Pat really had the kids at Penn State playing well late in the year. They had the win over Michigan. You know, I think a lot of teams in our league, from a comprehensive standpoint, Andy, top to bottom, 1 through 12, I think it has a chance to, to be just as strong. John Gross, the head coach of Illinois, Dave Pilopovich. Did I say that one right? Pilipovich. Pilipovich. I'm going to get this right. <laughs> head coach at Air Force. Pilipovich. And Joe Dooley, the head coach at 